So what is capital gains tax and how do you avoid it when selling your home? I get this question a lot as a real estate agent in Orange County for over 15 years now. Clients always ask, what are the tax implications of selling my property? There's two real big scenarios. One is when it is your primary residence when you're living in the home. And two is when it's an investment property and both have separate tax implications. So let's go ahead and discuss that. First, let's define what capital gains is. Capital gains is the gain you make on an asset that you sell. So it's the basis is what you purchased it for and the price that you sell it for is the gain. So for example, if I bought a home for $250,000 and I sold that property for $500,000, but I had $50,000 in real estate commissions and certain repairs, then I actually have a $200,000 gain on that property and I could get taxed on it when I sell it. So that is really important. So that's what capital gains is. Now let's talk about the two scenarios. First, when it is your primary residence, there are some exclusions, okay? So if I'm going to sell a home, the government gives me up to a $250,000 excluded gain if I'm a single person or up to a $500,000 exclusion on gain if I am a married person and both of us have been living in the property for a certain period of time. Typically, you're, you're going to have to live in the property for two out of the last five years as your primary residence and the home is not used as a rental property. So my wife and I live in our home now. We're not renting it out to anyone. We've been here for two years. We can now use that capital gains exclusion of up to $500,000 on gains. But if we had sold last year, which was before our two year time frame, we would have had to pay capital gains on the property. And capital gains are calculated, you check with your CPA, but typically on your income. So it, it, it is, if you're earning a lot of money, your capital gains could be excessive. But if you're not earning very much money, it might be a little bit lower. So check with your CPA on that. But that's how you can avoid it if it is a home you are living in as your primary residence. But what about the investors? What about the people who own rental properties? The government gives you what's called a tax, uh, a 1031 tax deferred exchange. So what does that mean? It means that if I own a rental property and I want to avoid paying capital gains taxes, I can defer them by buying a property of like kind for equal or greater value. So like kind, if I sell my real estate, I buy real estate, okay? So it has to be real estate. It can't be like I sell my home and I buy a car. Um, so it has to be like kind. So I sell my home that is an investment property. Let's say it's a single family home here in Orange County for $500,000. Then I go out and I purchase another investment property for $750,000. It's gotta be equal or greater value. I can avoid paying capital gains tax on that previous property. Now, what are some of the rules for doing a 1031 tax deferred exchange? Well, there's lots of complications and nuances, but I find that for 99.9% .9 of my clients, knowing these rules is very sufficient. That is the timeline you have to identify a property, the timeline you need to close on a property, and the, time, and the type of person you need to use to manage the process. So one, um, what is the timeline to identify a property? From closing on your previous home, you have 45 days to identify a few properties that might be potentials for your one tax deferred exchange. So as an example, I sold my $500,000 home, I went out and I house shopped and I find five or six properties that could be potentials to do the exchange with. So I've got to identify a property within 45 days. Then I have up until 180 days, so about six months to close on that property. So I can identify it, I can buy it, and I have to close within a six month time frame. For most people, I have found that this is more than enough time. If you're in Orange County, California, um, and you're making the move, you're gonna know right away if what you want is out there on the market. And I find that this is more than enough time frame for people to shop. 45 days to identify, 180 days to close. And then you have to use what's called a qualified intermediary. So you'll have an escrow company when you buy a home, but you'll also have a, um, a person who specializes in 1031 tax deferred exchange. They're a qualified intermediary. Usually they, um, they will specialize in this 
and they will charge you know a certain fee to handle the transaction and the, that person is who you will notify that you've identified the properties, you'll notify them when you close on your previous home, and you will work with them to get all the necessary paperwork filled out um, in order to do that. So um, that is what tax uh, capital gains is. That is how it applies when you are selling your primary residence, and that's how it applies when you are um, selling an investment property. I hope this information was helpful for you. Comment below um, anything else you've learned or any other questions you've had in this process. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Steven, your trusted realtor here in Orange County. I look forward to working with you soon.